We Americans are the most spoiled people on earth. That was Republican Senator Rick Scott at the Faith and Freedom Conference reminding everyone how much he hates the American people. Now, that portion of his speech went really viral because of how grotesquely wealthy he is. So for him to talk about how other people are spoiled... I mean, it's the height of irony. As the Tampa Bay Times reports, U.S. Senator Rick Scott is worth at least $166 million and likely much, much more, according to a disclosure report he filed Tuesday, making him one of the richest members of Congress. The Florida Republicans' investments include holdings in defense contractors and in a telecommunications company, according to his annual financial disclosure. Scott serves on Senate committees that regulate those industries. Scott's disclosure also showed he and his wife, Anne, have potentially tens of millions of dollars invested in private funds run by Scott's former financial advisors, effectively allowing him to circumvent disclosure requirements. Yeah, so it is truly insane to have one of the richest members of Congress, if not the richest member of Congress, denounce the American people and call them spoiled when more than half of Americans have medical debt, half of Americans can't afford an emergency, nearly 4 million American children live in poverty, and that could be less if he supported the child tax credit, but he does not. And despite these facts, he hates Americans so much that he literally pushed a plan to shift the tax burden even more onto working people with his absurdly comical Rescue America plan that even Republicans had to denounce because of how shamelessly antagonistic it was towards the working class. Now, if you just watched those few seconds of his speech, you would think that he's trying to make an economic argument, but really, in his broader speech, he attacks the militant left. And essentially, he lambasts members of the left because they dare to criticize aspects of American society. Take a look. We Americans are the most spoiled people on earth. We've been given such a great heritage, and we're taking it for granted. The founding fathers of our country, men like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison, men who are now considered to be evil racist, according to the top scholars in America's elite universities. These men set us on a course for success the world has never before seen. We survived the War of 1812, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War. But now, today, we face the greatest danger we have ever faced. The militant left wing in our country has become the enemy within. You may think that's pretty dramatic, right? Calling them the enemy within. Yes, I am, and here's why. Let's do a quick situation report. The militant left now has seized control of our economy, our culture, and our country. When you turn on the news at night, do you even recognize this country? Are you worried for your family, and are you worried for your freedoms? The, the woke left now controls the Democrat Party, the entire federal government, the news media, academia, big tech, Hollywood, corporate boardrooms, and now even some of our top military leaders. They are working hard to redefine America, silence their opponent, and that means each of you. They're destroying just about everything they touch, and they've got their hands on everything. So just think about what they're trying to destroy. It's a long list. American history, patriotism, border security, gender, traditional morality, capitalism, fiscal responsibility, opportunity, rugged individualism, Judeo-Christian values, free speech, law enforcement, religious liberty, parental involvement in schools, and private ownership of firearms. The woke left wants all of that gone. They have a goal of ending the American experiment. They want to replace freedom with control. The elites of the government are telling us what we can and cannot think what we can believe, and what we can do. They want complete control of our lives. Woke government run schools. Woke government run health care. Woke government run media. Woke government run everything. In their new socialist America, everybody be, everyone's going to go obey, and none of you will be allowed, allowed to complain. <clears throat> 
If you do speak up, boom, you're going to be canceled. Your views, if you don't conform with Big Tech or Fauci or Neil Young, you're going to be taken off of Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. They're the modern-day version of book burners. Canceling, silencing, and banning the Internet from the Internet, they're book burners. These are the most narrow-minded and tolerant people our country has ever seen before. Bingo! Sorry, just uh, filling out my GOP buzzword bingo because he hit on every single one of them there. And I love how in that last portion, he had the audacity to talk about how we're the book burners. The governor of your state has banned dozens of books because they're woke. And we're talking about math books. So how a math book can be woke, I don't necessarily know. But already just watching that, it's idiotic. But there's a number of questions that I have. First of all, what is woke healthcare? What does woke healthcare mean? Is that different from regular healthcare? Or is it just a twist that you put on it to dupe Americans into believing that we should continue to be gouged by private insurance companies? Also, um, another thing that he pointed out is um, that our founding fathers are now being referred to as racist, and apparently that's bad. Um, look, if you think that our founding fathers were not racist, you'd be an imbecile because they literally owned human beings as property. So if they had literal slaves, then yeah, I think that it is reasonable to deduce that they were racists. Pointing that out isn't bad. But really what this is about is his party currently is put on blast because of the January 6th Select Committee public hearings, where we are learning in great detail how his party of insurrectionists and authoritarian fascists tried to steal the 2020 election away from its rightful winner. So this rhetoric is nothing more than deflection, and his party is dominant despite being out of power currently. They're still setting the agenda, but yet they're the victims. The left is the one who's victimizing them, despite their cultural hegemony, despite heteronormativity being the norm, hence the word itself and that's what they're pushing so it's it just it's truly bizarre to me that um he'd say all of this but i mean all the things that he says they're inherently contradictory and this really is a thing that fascists do right they're, they're inherently hypocritical and contradictory on one hand they'll portray their opposition as really big and scary and trying to destroy society but simultaneously they're also really weak and they're snowflakes and they're, they're hypersensitive yeah so, you know, Rick Scott is a complete clown. And no, needless to say, if you have criticisms of America, that doesn't mean that you want to destroy America. It means you want to improve America. If you don't have criticisms of America, I'd argue that you don't really care because to suggest that any society is perfect would be idiotic. It'd be almost cult-like. But I mean, Rick Scott is in this death cult known as capitalism himself. I mean, why wouldn't he be? He's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So he's a piece of shit, and I don't think that this surprises anyone, but I'd be remiss to not leave you with a video of one of his constituents when he was the governor of Florida absolutely putting him on blast when he dared to show his disgusting face at a Starbucks, and this was just um, the highlight of the year when it came out. So enjoy. Sweet. Were you acting like a beta? <laughs>